Hi! Today we are painting a series of simple summer wildflowers. Now there are many ways in which you can approach watercolour flower painting. Um, we've done some quite detailed ones and now we're going to do something a little bit simpler. So we're just going to sort of go a bit more easy on the detail. These are lovely little flowers that are perfect for slightly smaller scale uh, paintings, good for wreaths, good for little decorative borders. So let's get started. Okay, hey everyone. I'm really excited today to paint some nice simplified wildflowers that we find in a beautiful wildflower meadow in the summer. So I'm going to start off with red campion and I'm just going to paint a nice sort of simple stem using my size 2 brush and then that's going to just to branch off like that. But red campion is a lovely flower that has quite a lot of the colour of the flower running through the stem. So I just used a bit of crimson there whilst that was still wet. And now the flower has these lovely sort of red uh, sort of budding stems that come off each flower. So I'm just using the sort of belly of the brush to create some little sort of, um, oh, they look like sort of seed heads, I suppose. Just two mirrored C curves, and then we'll just extend the branch up there, and we'll have one like that, and then we're going to do an open faced flower. Okay, now I'm going to get myself a little bit more of this lovely colour on my brush. And I'm going to start by doing some side on flowers. So first off, I'm going to use this as the base and the side on flowers. The petals have got this sort of um, dual split sort of up the middle like that. almost looks very similar to the kind of thing we just painted there. And then I'm going to take some slightly more concentrate colour and just drop it up the middle and down the side there. Now some of the buds aren't open at all yet, so we're just going to leave that one as it is. And then we're going to have this one as just sort of starting to open. So I'm to start with the sort of little petals. Either you could start from the top and work your way down with a finer bit of the brush or you can start from the finer tip of the brush and sort of squidge it out like that a little bit and then dropping in a little bit more of that crimson really pretty okay now for our open face flower I always like to get my pencil involved just because well it makes our life a lot easier so they have got five so five of these split petals, so that is one. It's almost like painting a load of wishbones, I suppose. So overlap on the other one. I find what's really a handy tip when I'm painting petal flowers that have got like, I need to count the number of petals I've got, usually doing three takes me around halfway round and then I can just fill up with the last two. And it just always seems to work. And then actually with a bit of permanent rose I think this time, not so much the crimson. I'm just going to use the brush to do sort of dashes around that central circle and it, in turn it's going to sort of blend out to the edge which is quite nice down the petal and then we'll just do a little of that there and this one is just starting to open really nice. Now the only other thing for Red Campion is a few little leaves so I'll get my sap green. Now first off we always get a little bit of a leaf growth at these flowering branches so that's just a lovely little C curve but when we have a sort of slightly larger branch thing going on here 
the leaves are also a bit larger too. So, and they grow out at um, sort of mirroring points. Now the best way to do this is get your larger brush and either, so I'm trying to get my hand position right, squish it out into mirrored C curves or just the one will do as well. It's looking pretty nice. I'm just going to go back in a tiny bit more detail with this little grid of crimson and just sort of capture a little bit of a, a bud going down. Lovely. And that is a really simple red campion flower, which is one that's really commonly found in British wildflower meadows. Okay, so the next flower we're gonna paint, um, probably well loved by many of you, is just the simple field poppy, but it is so beautiful. It's towering and beautiful. So, uh, size two brush again, sap green, just going to draw ooh, a slightly wiggly wobbly, but thin stem. And then whilst that's still wet, I'm gonna pick up some cadmium red and all I'm going to do is squish that large brush down and do three large brush strokes and that is all you need. The only thing I like to add is a little dab of black. And that is a really, really simple field poppy. Okay, so we've got these two flowers, really nice. I'm just gonna move those up. The next flower I'm gonna paint is honeysuckle. So I'm going to give myself just a little bit of a trailing vine. And then I'm going to use some permanent rose. And then with my size four brush, I'm going to paint some lovely little honeysuckle sort of crowns, I suppose, using that branch as my sort of central guidance point. Now the honeysuckle's lovely in pink, but it does sort of fade out a little bit. And I've got this sort of amber color, which is a mixture of cadmium orange and a bit of ochre which does form the more open trumpet, which is when the pink petals have matured and opened. But they all sort of want to open up from one central point. And let's do, give ourselves one more. Oh, no, that's the right color. I think if you struggle to get a, a sort of nice rounded point at the top of your honeysuckles, there's, don't worry, you can always sort of just round it like that and actually shape it. I quite like those little unpainted bits as well. Okay, lovely. And then whilst that's drying, I'll take my size two brush, let's get a little bit more, a little bit more of the sap green into the yellow green mix. And I'm gonna just run the leaf down. It doesn't matter if we get a little bit of, there we go, I quite like that, a little bit of blend. Honeysuckle's got a lovely sort of windy quality. So now I'm going to add on some leaves that grow at all sort of sizes and shapes, uh, not sizes and shapes, but all sizes on the honeysuckle vine. 
So this would be a lovely one to sort of add to nice borders, I think, as a sort of filler flower towards the end. Yeah, a nice little simple sepal leaf going on there. You could use a larger brush, but I quite like having the control and I like being able to do all the different brush shapes and leaf shapes with the one brush. Let's blend that up really nice. And then the last thing to do for this honeysuckle is to do a few little lines, little sort of filaments popping out at the end. So I'll get a bit more of that concentrated orange. And then whilst it's still wet, that's quite nice. I tend to do three. And then a little bit of ochre. Wake that up and just do a little anther on the end of each filament. And there's a lovely honeysuckle. The next one we're going to do is the cornflower. So I'm going to get some nice cornflower blue mixed up. So the cobalt blue is a lovely, lovely colour which will work really nicely. It's pretty perfect without much else needed. So we've got our sap green and I'm going to just paint a central stem. And let's have one coming off the side. The leaves are long and smooth with cornflower. So they can just be single, single brush stroke leaves if you wanted. I like to add in a little bit of darkness to them, even though it's just a simple, simple version. Okay, so if you're seeing a cornflower from the side, you get the little sort of seed head bulge. But if you're seeing it from the front, you just see the lovely blue flower. So I do like to give myself a little bit of guidance. Size two. I've got a lot of brushes out today. Right, let's get that cornflower blue into play. So from the side, I'll actually, actually no, let's get up to the top and not stick my hand into wet paint, Harriet. That's a good idea. Okay, so if always starting from the middle, I'm going to sort of squish out in a, a little double petal and always try and anchor your petals in the middle. And we're going to build these up slowly. And then we're going to let that one dry. So we'll do this from the side now. And this time we get a nice, yeah, it's a kind of cool little blend that bleeds down into the seed pod at times. So now and there. They're just going to be a little bit sort of shorter coming out of the top. Okay, so we're going to let that dry and just finish off that simple cornflower when with another layer of the blue petals. Okay, this is nice and dry now, so we're just going to repeat the blue petals on the open faced flower. And so we'll get a little bit of overlap. 
and that's what we want. So it's important to be painting your cornflower petals with a, a fair bit of translucence to them. But you don't have to be completely pale because they do stand out against each other quite all right. Okay, and that's really kind of lovely. We'll give a little bit more, just a few more layers to this one. And then lastly, we'll get a bit of deep darkness in here with a little mix of Prussian blue and a little bit of Mars black and just a few dabs in the middle. We'll just give it a little bit of depth, but there we go, there's a cornflower for you. And now we've got the last one, which is a, I beg your pardon, my pencil, which is a rose hip. So I'm going to paint this one this way round. Rose hip, we've got beautiful berries and we've also got a nice flower. So I thought this would be a really nice one to do. So I'm going to just draw it first. So we'll have a leaf, we'll have some berries and we're going to have a flower. I'm going to start off by painting the flower itself. So a rose hip, well, it's a sort of wild rose. It is a wild rose, Harriet. Um, I'm going to begin by just creating a very rough little sort of sunshine around the edge of that circle I painted. And then I'm gonna take my lovely sort of pinky red that I've got here, and I'm gonna create some lovely large petals that are going to pick up that yellow. So I'm doing sort of mirrored brush strokes, big sort of blousy petals here. It's going to cover over most of the stem. That's okay. And we're going to leave that like that for the moment and we're going to focus on the berries and the leaves. So down, ooh, bit of fluff. Down here comes the stem. Up there are the berries. So the berries are gonna branch off like that. The rosehip berries are much sort of deeper crimson than the flower. So we're just going to use some of that lovely alizarin crimson and I am going to just very simply with a large brush paint some large berries with two mirrored C strokes making sure that we get a little bit of unpainted space in there. And then some leaves, let's get some sap green. And these are rather like rose leaves. Um, if you haven't watched my rose painting tutorial, then I highly recommend you go and have a little look at that to just master the nice rose leaf. That's nice. Another one here. The big broad leaves with a bit of a serrated edge. So I'm just going to help that along. And then I like the idea of just 
adding a bit of hooker's green in just to liven it up a fraction. Now the little berries themselves need a hint of darkness at the top so just two little sort of bunny ears will almost do and a, a little bit of green in the middle of the rose hip flower now. I've sort of left this to do last having done the yellow bit of flower first because I just wanted it to have a bit of time to set in but I didn't want it bone dry and all I'm going to do is dab a little bit in the middle there and there's your rose hip. I hope you enjoyed painting those slightly simpler flowers. Uh, next time we're actually going to be putting all of those together into a really nice bit of word art so look out for that but thanks so much for watching and um, I'd love it if you'd like, comment and subscribe once again and I'll see you again next time. Bye!